In conference rooms, classrooms, smart homes, and places that are home to power, our products help people connect, communicate, and collaborate. Master a meeting, an opportunity, a moment. And while sometimes our solutions do nothing more than advance the proper mood, more often they move companies, communities, and even humanity forward. And it's that innovation that fuels us. We are Crestron. We've defined and redefined the best in room automation, smart home systems, content distribution, and video conferencing technology. We never stop pushing further, creating solutions that exceed expectations, defy limitations, relentlessly committed to research and development. The result? Leading edge products, built in factories of the future, equipped with quality assurance that replicates years of service in the service of peace of mind. What can't be replicated? The ingenuity of design teams creating solutions for customers long before a sale and support that continues for decades afterwards. Training, education, we push these too. Partnering with the industry's most ambitious professionals at Crestron Masters, so they, like us, are fueled by all the things innovation will help them do. Crestron, innovation fuels us. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages. Welcome to Innovation Fuels Us here at Crestron Masters 2021. I'm Richard Sasson, the Global Director of Training here at Crestron Electronics, and it is my honor and pleasure to have you join us for this session and the entire week of education here at the Crestron Masters 2021 event. Joining us during this session is Mr. Ron John Singh, our Chief Technology Officer, and Mr. Brad Hintzey, our Chief Marketing Officer. These gentlemen are going to show us how Crestron fuels us through incredible innovation, technologies, and platforms. We are so glad that you could be here with us today. It's time to get this event started. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take it away. Welcome, and thank you for joining us today. At Crestron, we are driven to create products and experiences for businesses and homes. And we know, like us, you too are fueled by bringing ideas to life often in ways never done before. From meeting places, to distributing audio and video around the globe, to smart homes, and even landing rovers on Mars. Today is all about those innovations we enable and create together. For over 20 years, Crestron Masters has been the gathering place for the most talented innovators around the world. Your work powers some of the most valuable companies and inspires us to continue to build products that fuel your innovations. For that, we thank you for your partnership and commitment to Crestron. Today, we'll speak with our key partners about what we're doing together to bring you new opportunities. We'll highlight some of the innovative projects you have built, and we'll introduce new Crestron products and capabilities. At Crestron, we passionately believe that innovation is the domain of Crestron employees, our partners, and our customers. Through countless conversations and experiences working directly with each of you, we have established four pillars that drive our product innovation. Creating the best technology experience for end users, building platforms that offer long-term value and growth, scalable deployment management and support that is securely delivered through the cloud, and using data to provide actionable insights that inform your decisions. We know you just want technology that is easy to use and simply works every time. We obsess over the workflows that deliver the best experiences to end users and build products and services that enable delivery of those experiences. Whether it's designing an elegant touchscreen for the tabletop or mounted on the wall, a scheduling panel with light bars that simplifies the room booking and location experience, or a wireless presentation platform that makes it effortless to share content in a room. We invest in product platforms rather than one-off products. Platforms give you the best return on your investment, continually evolving and giving you new capabilities over time and natively giving you an ability to connect with external tools, data, and processes. Platforms provide you the greatest flexibility and choice in deployment. We have four strategic platforms at Crestron. 
Crestron Flex, our video collaboration and room technology platform, DMNVX, our digital media content distribution platform, XIO Cloud, our management and service platform, and Crestron Home, our smart home platform. We also know you're expected to deploy more with less. With 50 million plus meeting spaces that need to be technology enabled, scale in deployment and operations is key and it must simply work every time. Central to each of our platforms is remote management and monitoring, including self-healing and recovery capabilities. And we are taking this further. We are building APIs and integration capabilities into our cloud platform, so you can build your own pane of glass, automating your service workflows to deliver the best experience to your end users. We will also provide the data and tools to derive actionable insights into how your enterprise technology is used, informing more of your business and investment decisions. We look forward to our continued partnership. We are inspired by the way you use our products and your input helps us shape and fuel our product innovations. Let's talk about the modern workplace. Many have predicted the end of office life, and while that may work for some, we believe it's not clear cut. You need solutions that bridge the office with the home office. As social creatures, we're innately drawn to congregate. And for most of us, our work improves through effective collaboration. As office life returns, we all need to adjust, yet again, to a new way of working and collaborating. One that balances the benefits of being in the office with the flexibility of working from home. This hybrid approach is the new future of work. But what exactly does it mean to enable hybrid work? It's simple. You need easy to use collaboration technology available across the enterprise and even in homes. This technology needs to be reliable, easy to deploy, and it needs to get out of the way to enable better work. To get started on the new future of work, it's best to look at what we have learned over the last year. No one has studied the future of work more than our longtime partner, Microsoft. I recently sat down with the head of Microsoft Teams devices to talk about what we've learned and what we should look forward to. I'm here with Ilya Buchstein, general manager of Microsoft Teams devices. So Ilya, what is it that you all are doing to enable hybrid work? Well, thanks, Brad. First of all, uh, it's always a, a joy and a fun time for me to spend time with my friends at Crestron. Uh, and it's especially a privilege for me to be able to address uh, this audience, which is just so key to delivering the team's experience. Uh, you know, we think of ourselves in teams as building a platform. Our partners like Crestron and your partners make it real for all of our joint customers. So thank you for having me. Um, to go to your question, you know, what's top of mind? I think it's the same as many of us, both personally and professionally. Personally, we're living through this, uh, what we could only hope is a once in a lifetime experience. This last year spent sort of dramatically changing our, our lives and how we work. Uh, and so I think many of us are maybe now cautiously optimistic that we're seeing the light at the end of the pandemic tunnel. Um, I also think many of us though have some anxiety about what is that gonna mean? And as someone who works on teams, of course, what that means is I think a lot about what do we need to do to really enable this hybrid workplace to make it as productive, as delightful, and hopefully not at all exhausting as possible. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. So I was uh, reading a report you all just recently published, the the new Future of Work report. And there, there were some really interesting things in there that I wanted to talk to you about. One was that this notion of social presence, you know, when you're speaking to somebody on, on video conferencing, you know, just showing that you're actively engaged in the conversation is so important, particularly in one-on-one -on -one and small group meetings. And so for, for us, we kind of think about, well, that means we really need to take video conferencing to all the small spaces too. It can't, it can't be reserved for just those big exec boardrooms and whatnot. A hundred percent agreed. In fact, one of the things we, we chat about a lot with customers is what is that 
sort of first day experience going to be like for people who choose to go back to the workplace? And imagine if everyone is now used to talking the way you and I are speaking, where we see each other, we hear each other, we all have sort of equal space. And now imagine one of us walks into a room with a starfish phone, uh, you know, just the phone. Uh, what may have been acceptable pre-pandemic, I don't think will be acceptable. I, I actually think, uh, in fact, not just I think, I've had CIOs tell me they are worried employees will turn around and go home. Uh, if they can't see each other, if they can't feel equal to the other people in the meeting. So there are several steps that I think customers are going to be thinking about very quickly at an accelerated pace. One is if you assume that the people in a meeting that are remote and in a room are equal, meaning the decision maker, if there is one, may be remote or may be in the room. The key collaborators may be remote, may be in the room or may be split. Well, then you have to assume that the experience has to be equitable across those. And that means as a baseline, everyone has to be able to see and hear everyone else. So yep. with pre-pandemic, only 10 to 15 percent of business meeting spaces being video enabled. I, I think a lot of customers are now saying, well, what can we do to get that to 40, 60, 100 percent very quickly? Um, yeah. That's right. Even here at Microsoft, uh, we have about 15,000 business meeting rooms worldwide. Half of them are four person and below kind of focus rooms. And our plan was to deploy Teams rooms to 7,500 rooms, half of rooms. Uh, that plan has now changed. It, it's now how do we get it to 15,000 every single room? <laughs> so I think that's yeah. very top of mind uh, for a lot of customers. Uh, I will say, though, that I'm hearing that especially some of the more forward-looking customers are already thinking, is that going to be enough? Uh, right. When you can, let's assume you can see and hear everybody in every room, is that still uh, going to deliver the right experience? Um, so we're already having discussions of actually how can we build on that with more advanced capabilities in teams, with more advanced AI capabilities, to really make that hybrid experience uh, be the ideal. Well, I think in addition to the rooms, right, the other thing that I took away from the report that I thought was really interesting was the utilization of a secondary device. So even in those, you know, the individual workspaces, a desk, you know, an individual office, having a dedicated Teams device was really a way to unlock so much productivity too. Yeah, I think those two concepts go very hand in hand of having a dedicated device and then being able to use advanced capabilities to deliver advanced user experiences. So, uh, and that's true, I think, both in the room and on the remote side. In other words, certainly everyone is going to be better off uh, with great AV peripherals and not just their laptop. Um, I think we've already seen that. Uh, nobody likes the up the chin camera shot that you get from a laptop lid. Uh, and so I think as people uh, get used to uh, being sometimes remote, our natural human desire to want to be our best selves leads to saying, well, how can I be seen better regardless of lighting condition? How can I be heard better regardless of dogs barking or lawnmower, uh, you know, in the background? But when you take that to the next step and say, how can I also stay productive uh, regardless of how many hours of meetings I'm doing and uh, make sure that I can always join my meetings in the fastest way possible? You get to the benefits of having a dedicated device in addition to your primary work device. Um, putting it a different way, there's a reason why having a dedicated room system makes a lot of sense instead of trying to have everyone bring in their laptops and join meetings. You join the meeting quickly, you get the best audio and video, and people can still use their personal devices. Those same benefits happen in a home office. Uh, I will also add that what we're hearing from many customers is as they look ahead, the, the shifting spending that they see in their 
commercial uh, workspace may end up going, and I think will, frankly, end up going towards a new set of benefits for both employees and IT, which is to say that um, the home office kit may become the new gourmet cafeteria. You know, customers uh, are telling us that they're looking at uh, how they can equip all of us to have a great home office environment. And that's a competitive differentiator for hiring, but it's also an IT benefit in terms of being able to manage those devices and gain insight from them. Uh, so I think That's there's right, a yeah. lot of uh, there's a lot of potential benefits to companies now seeing the home office as an extension of the spaces that they equip for Teams meetings. In our case, well, I th- I think that could also be one of those ways that it's really important to make it so that all of the participants in a meeting, you know, including the remote participants, are all kind of on the equal footing. Right. If everybody in the meeting room has really great equipment, but then everybody at home is just stuck on their laptop, you know, that could create some of that separation. So I, you know, originally I thought, well, I would never want another desk phone on my desk. You know, Teams is doing it for me. Uh, But now after using Teams so uh, pervasively for the last year, I I yearn for (laughs) a, a dedicated device so I can be productive. And so it is an interesting kind of evolution where some people say, oh, no, do it all on your laptop. No, these devices that are designed precisely for that can deliver such a great experience. Well, I'll also say that uh, with dedicated devices, there's more of an opportunity to use intelligent audio and intelligent video, AI-driven, hardware-driven experiences to uh, provide these more equitable experiences. So for an example, I think pre-pandemic, Uh, If we were gathered together in one space and there were some remote participants, pretty clearly uh, the meetings optimized towards those of us in the room. Uh, I think most people would agree. Um, Now, when the decision maker may be remote or most people may be remote, one could argue that uh, it's actually negative to be in the room. Everybody remote gets their own square of video. We're together in a room. Maybe we're hard to to be seen. Um, And so we're very focused on saying, can we use AI to make sure that even when you're together in a room with multiple people, um, everyone who's remote knows who's in the room, we can identify people, knows who said what, and we can use advanced video intelligence to kind of give everyone their own uh, square video, if you will, or video space. So we're very much thinking about the end-to-end experience, that's part one. The other thing I'll mention that's been interesting to see is that meetings are no are no longer just an instance in time. Uh, so if you're like me, uh, I've got typically for any given hour, two or three meetings I'm supposed to attend uh, and I can't clone myself yet. So uh, <laughs> there's a very natural human, uh, you may have heard the term FOMO, right? fear of missing out. <laughs> yeah. There are meetings I probably shouldn't be in that I may be in just to make sure I hear if my name's called out. Meanwhile, there's other meetings I can't be in and I'm not sure what happened. So we're seeing much more of a focus on kind of the what happened to set up the meeting, what happened during the meeting, and then what's going to happen as next steps. In other words, having the agenda, the work items, the uh, PowerPoint slides, the discussion in teams ahead of a meeting, having a meeting that is then transcribed so that uh, we can recognize when my name is said. And in many cases, I actually could be more productive watching the recording and reading the transcript afterwards than being there physically. Uh, And then after the fact, having extraction of action items and, and that ongoing collaboration. We see that life cycle as being also very important towards enabling this hybrid workplace so that People don't feel the need to have to be all in one place physically or don't even feel the need to be in a particular meeting in real time. Yep. Yeah, that's right. I That is, one, frankly, one of the features I really love about Teams is that continuity of the conversation that happens in chat uh, related to the, the, the meeting, you know, in a very specific way. You know, we were doing this the other day. I was, I was on a call 
on my Mercury Mini on my desk, but I was using my laptop to chat with right. the other meeting participants. And it was so brilliant how, you know, it, for me as a user it was really seamless, but, you know, as a, a, a colleague and collaborating with others, it was really a productive way to get work done. We've seen that. We've seen a huge uptick in chat being a secondary ongoing medium during the meeting and then after it like i think it's incredibly yeah. interesting to see how we can get more questions answered even while some discussion is taking place in chat and then keep that going after the meeting and frankly for reoccurring meetings that chat is so useful the next instance so you pick up where you left off and you're not repeating things uh, so yeah, it's it's a fascinating uh, experiment we're living through, but we really feel like in teams we can help with that digital transformation and and help make it not just a new reality, but a a good new reality. Yeah, I think you guys are doing really great work, and we thank you for your partnership. It's so great to have such a close relationship and be working on these problems uh, together. Uh, so thank you for your time, Ilya. And we'll talk to you again. Thank you so much, Brad. I appreciate it. At Crestron, we take pride in the way we manufacture our products. From initial design to fulfillment, our process ensures Crestron delivers excellence and innovation. When people find out that we make our own products, they're pretty surprised. But then they see what goes into this, and they're blown away. It starts with surface mount machines that transform engineering ideas into physical designs. The placement of every component, the quality of every solder joint is inspected with a combination of 3D optical, robotic, and x-ray technology. Nothing down to one one hundredth the width of a human hair escapes their gaze. Our product testing technology examines thousands of details a minute. Speed allows Crestron to do more detailed testing throughout the manufacturing process. Completed prototypes are tested for safety and regulatory compliance. Most companies send this work out of house. Crestron performs it at one of the most well-equipped electromagnetic chambers in the United States. Once approved, products are broken, then broken again. Sophisticated vibration machines, thermal shock chambers, and drop simulation replicate years of use, abuse, in a matter of days. The result? Performance measured in decades and unrivaled client satisfaction. Crestron is equally as dedicated to quality fulfillment. Every product we make leaves from one of five global fulfillment centers. Wholly owned by Crestron, these facilities push the science of logistics to a higher level. Every Crestron product is shipped in packaging, custom designed for its particular specifications. Crestron Manufacturing. Sure, others may say we take our standards too far. We know they're the best way to take customers as far as they want to go. Everything we do, all the testing and manufacturing innovations, they're all about delivering the best experiences for the people who rely on Crestron. Video conferencing and collaboration is at the center of the modern workplace, and the Crestron Flex platform is designed to support you in a move to hybrid work. Over the past two years, we have delivered devices and capabilities that enable flexibility and choice for you, ensuring a consistent experience across all spaces, from the home office to the huddle room, the boardroom, and beyond. We have also expanded our native Microsoft Teams integrations, including shipping one of the first team scheduling panels and expanded our Zoom rooms to include native room controls. Flex is truly a technology platform for the modern workplace. And a key part of that is the ability to enable experiences beyond the native collaboration experience, such as the ability to control displays, presentation sources, lights, shading, and more. Flex can seamlessly integrate the room technology with the broader ecosystem in your enterprise, from scheduling panels to room control to AV distribution and switching. Flex also delivers analytics to the cloud about occupancy and utilization to inform your real estate decisions. 
With all that, we believe there are three characteristics unique to Flex that make it a platform tailor-made for the modern workplace and hybrid work. First, Flex can easily go into any room, from the huddle room to meeting rooms of all shapes and sizes. We believe that the room system OS shouldn't dictate the audio and video experience. Rather, you can optimize for the audio and video experience and have your choice in the OS. We are expanding that choice to include Android. All of the device and capabilities that are available on Flex today will be available on Android, with native support for Microsoft Teams on Android and Zoom rooms. Second, we have added a complete lineup of Flex phones for Microsoft Teams. Users now have a dedicated device for their Microsoft Teams calls, leaving their laptop for daily work. We have extended the one-touch join experience, quick access to calendars and contacts, and they can even see shared content on the perfect desktop companion device. One of the important lessons we've learned from a year of virtual work is how often users employed a secondary device for meetings, whether it was for better camera angles or a more reliable connection or to simply free up their laptop. Now with these flex phones, you can provide your users a dedicated Teams device with incredible audio and video performance. And with built-in cloud management, we have made these easy to deploy at scale, whether in the office or even in employees' homes. Third, Flex is the only room systems platform that natively integrates all the technology within the modern workplace. You can easily integrate Flex with the broader ecosystem of enterprise technology to unlock new and interesting use cases. Crestron Flex even helped NASA land the rover on Mars through an innovative integration with our digital media platform. As you move towards a hybrid workplace, the Flex platform will continue to evolve to meet your needs. We are just getting started. All right, I'm here with Tony Carafa, uh, somebody who helped land a project with JPL and NASA, uh, you know, landing a rover on Mars just recently. So Tony, why don't you tell us how you and Crestron contributed to getting those first images from Mars back down to Earth. Hey, Brad, thanks for having me. Uh, so we, we have an NVX system that we put in place for these mission support areas, and the NVX serves as the video backbone. Uh, so when these first images came uh, after the after the EDL, after the, Mar the rover landed on Mars, these first images were uh, received by these workstations in the mission support area uh, that were connected NVX transmitters. Uh, and then this, the NVX backbone was used to uh, project the images, but also transmit the images through to their broadcast and to the live stream. So these first of a kind images, first of a kind images that you saw on the live stream were actually transmitted through Crestron as the first few links in the chain. Yeah. So you were in the room, right? Uh, so no pressure. You know, people have worked 10 years or longer, <laughs> decades uh, to get these images and you're responsible for that infrastructure. What was it? What was it like to be in the room? Yeah, you know, it, it's exhilarating to be a part of that and to be in the room. It's it's very intense. You know, the ten, you can cut the tension with a knife. Uh, at that point, you're really in the set it and, and forget it phase. And that's that's true for my team and it's true for the Mars rover team. I mean, you want to talk about automation. These guys do automation. They automated this entire entry, descent and landing sequence. So nothing you could do at that point. It's hands off. It's fingers crossed and you hope it all worked. Uh, luckily, it was a success and the team was thrilled. Yeah, that's great. So I think that, you know, naturally everybody, when you imagine a mission control center, you imagine all of these screens and all of this content that's coming in. And so, you know, that clearly is driven by NVX, right, uh, across all of those screens? Yes, that's right. And so how does, how does Flex come into this project? You know, you had all of those in the mission control center, but then how did you take that with Flex into the rest of the building? Well, so th this design was a multi-mission design. Uh, Mars 2020 was the first mission to use the space, but the original requirements were there's 45 rooms and they all had to have, the, you know, and the, and the rooms vary from conference room to war room to the large mission support 
uh, multi-purpose use areas. Um, so they all had requirements for uh, web conferencing, uh, voice teleconferencing. So the, the Crestron Mercury was an elegant solution for this. It helped really reduce the infrastructure footprint, the, the, the equipment footprint, and give them a product that they actually have already purposed on, on lab. Uh, JPL and Crestron worked together a couple years ago to get the uh, Mercury certified for use on their network. So it was something they had a familiarity with. So it was kind of a no brainer for us to say, let's, let's put these in these small spaces. It's something that solves the problem in one elegant solution for the whole space. But then the challenge beyond that was they were looking for centralized video distribution. They wanted to be able to share video from any room to any room. So we augmented these NV, uh, sorry, Mercury systems with uh, an NVX, uh, NVX 350 in line with the display so that from a custom touch panel on the wall, the user can choose to share their video with another room via the NVX backbone, or they can choose to view video um, that has been shared with them. Uh, so it's an easily, it, it, a, a, easy user functionality uh, for that kind of collaboration. And that worked out really well. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Now, also, if you think about a mission control center, the image that I conjure up in my mind doesn't seem very COVID friendly. Uh, and, you know, we landed the rover uh, right in the middle of this pandemic. And how did, how did that work out for you at, as you were trying to adjust to these new protocols? Yeah, um, I think that's a really interesting part of the, about this project. We actually came up with this design and concept in 2019, uh, completely prior to COVID. We began commissioning in March of 2020. Uh, so, you know, at the time, JPL went on mandatory work from home. Uh, we were, you know, the only mission that was still operational at the time on lab. So we were able to continue doing our work. But the Mars 2020 team didn't move in until July uh, in preparation for the launch. So. They moved, when they moved in, they were under COVID protocols that hadn't obviously hadn't been in place prior to that, prior when the system was designed or the project was, was conceived. So um, they had to spread out. You, you've seen probably video of uh, other landings or other operations where you've got rows and rows of workstations and you've got engineers and physicists and, and, and all the teams are right next to each other on headsets. We, can't, we couldn't do that anymore. Rooms that would have had 30 people now could have five people. So uh, fortunately, uh, because of the flexible nature of the design, we were able to spread out and repurpose rooms that would have been used for maybe just conferencing. Now there's people in here with their workstations and everyone can, can share video uh, between rooms and communicate. And it, it ended up making it a kind of minimal impact on the mission, um, thankfully, because uh, they had a launch window they couldn't miss, you know, so. Yeah, that is definitely hybrid work to the extreme. Right. right? Yeah. It makes makes me going home and working sound far simpler. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that's great. Well, Tony, thank you for walking us through this project. I think it's a really exciting and in interesting project, and we look forward to the future missions and, and future work out there on Mars. Great. Thanks for having me, Brad. For more than a decade, Crestron's digital media solutions have helped you get content from any source to any display. Built on several generations of products, Crestron has deployed millions of DM endpoints worldwide. Whether you're sharing in simple cases like a single source and display or much more dynamic installations like eSports, all the way up to secure and sophisticated mission control systems, NVX is the right platform for your needs. One of our strategic technology platforms, we continue to invest in making NVX even better. In the last two years, we have pushed over 80 updates, bringing you new features to hardware that's already deployed. With NVX, we continue to ensure the latest video formats are built in, most recently adding support for HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision. These formats are available now and help you get even more value from your installed products. Opening up new opportunities, our most recent release unlocks KVM applications, enabling management and control of routing from a centralized location. Simple keyboard shortcuts can easily initiate source routing and trigger events with USB HID short key switching. Now it's trivial to cycle through Windows layouts or video wall presets. Next, we have added the ability to display a static image 
when a content source isn't active, giving your spaces a dynamic and personalized feel when not being used. You asked for the ability to preview sources so users can be confident they're selecting the right content. With the latest update, NVX delivers the capability you asked for. To simplify your system designs and larger deployments, we've added support for multiple control systems to connect to the NVX director. Driven by your feedback, this eliminates communication bottlenecks and makes programming simpler. We've also released new inter-domain routing capabilities that make it easier to organize your installation into logical switchers while still supporting global sources. We continue to make it simpler to deliver any content anywhere, even in the most complex situations. An exciting advancement that expands the NVX platform is the addition of our DMNAX audio over IP solutions. This new audio platform brings the same flexibility and scalability to audio that NVX brought to video. Ensuring interoperability with thousands of products already on the market, NAX is built on the AES67 standard. And with the native interoperability between NAX and NVX, you get the most refined, developed, and capable audio and video distribution platform. One of the first products on this audio platform is our new streaming amplifier, built for residential and light commercial applications. This streaming amp expands the platform with support for popular streaming services such as SiriusXM, Pandora, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music, as well as casting services such as AirPlay 2 and Spotify Connect. With powerful DSP processing, every space can be tuned to provide optimal audio quality. Because NVX lives on your network, we have built it to adhere to the highest levels of security. We are currently in the process of NIAP and Common Criteria Compliance Certification, further enhancing the platform to meet the rigorous cybersecurity requirements of governments worldwide. You can be confident that Crestron continues to invest in security and ensure that NVX is the platform of choice for enterprises worldwide. When DMNVX launched, it was the coolest thing to see the attraction in the industry, to see how fast everyone moved. We can't have pixelation, we can't have latency, and we can't have distortion of color. So having the best AV technology around is incredibly important for us. No matter what we throw at the NVX system, it takes that content and spits it out wherever we need it, at the exact resolution we gave it. As a leader in cybersecurity, it's our responsibility to have technology in place that met government standards, and that's why we chose NVX. We have some Defense Department, military personnel, and even special operations groups that come through. DM NVX is the only government certified solution that provides a safe and secure platform. Crestron NVX was not only an optimal solution for our active learning classrooms, but it has enabled my team to design and deploy our core standards for these dynamic spaces. Each station within the Technology Commons is equipped with NVX, allowing us to not only broadcast video and audio seamlessly to the gamer, but also to be able to project the experience within the Technology Commons to other viewers, whether it be on this campus or other campuses around the globe. Crestron has given us the opportunity to reinvent how we use our sports book. Our viewing booths offer a more customized viewing experience. Customers can choose exactly what they want to watch, what they want to listen to. The NVX system also ties directly in with our VR systems, and it provides our students with a live feed of what is being displayed from the machine. We can also then do live green screen mixing where we can actually showcase the VR environment that the students are actually interacting with. The Green Bay Packers have a long and storied history dating back to the team's establishment in 1919. 
In addition to the tradition of on-field excellence with an NFL record 13 world championships and 27 Pro Football Hall of Famers, we are the NFL's only community-owned team with more than 360,000 shareholders. Lambeau Field, the Packers' home, is the longest tenured stadium in the NFL and easily ranks as one of the most recognized and envied locales in all of sports. The experience of watching a game from inside Lambeau Field is special for Packers fans and visiting fans alike. And our lighting is controlled by Crestron. The stadium is over 2 million square feet, so having Crestron allows us to streamline operations and reduce energy consumption. With Crestron, we have one vendor and one system that's easy to use. We recommend Crestron Lighting because they have a solution for every application. Crestron Lighting allows Lambeau Field to fully automate their lighting system so it works as they need it when they need it. We've transitioned the vast majority of the stadium to Crestron, including concourses, suites, club seats, event spaces, parking lots, and facade lighting. We are exploring the renovation of several areas and Crestron provides extensive flexibility for growth. Crestron is capable of so much that as we renovate areas of the building, we'll have the option to create unique lighting scenes that will only add to the fans' experience. What makes Crestron great is the quality and craftsmanship of the products, the people, and the support they provide. In the 20 years that I've been doing this with Crestron, we've never been let down. We've always been taken care of and we've delivered every project. Wide adoption of video conferencing technology has resulted in an exponential increase in the number of devices and rooms that your IT teams have to manage. These meeting spaces must work and be operational at all times. In the past year, IT teams' responsibilities have grown from managing a handful of key spaces to hundreds of meeting rooms and home offices. Add to that geo-dispersed locations, with no immediately available on-the-ground personnel, and the situation quickly becomes unmanageable, creating a poor experience for your end users. We've been through this before with enterprise software. The cost and complexity of managing on-prem, email, CRM, and other critical business systems quickly exceeded initial deployment costs and pushed businesses to embrace SaaS to reduce costs, scale support, and deliver far better business outcomes. The accelerated adoption of video collaboration and the proliferation of connected devices is now putting the same pressure on workspace technologies. You need to ensure rooms are functioning well, keeping the system secure and up-to-date, and do it at scale, a global scale, while keeping costs low. This is why we have invested so heavily in XIO, to manage all your workspace technology. We have created a suite of operational tools that enable integrators to deliver technology as a service and your IT organizations to operate efficiently and with greater peace of mind. And we built XIO Cloud from the ground up to be secure and scalable. With XIO Cloud built in, all the technology in your rooms across the enterprise can be securely managed remotely from anywhere in the world through a single pane of glass, providing you and your help desk teams unique and critical capabilities. Over the last year, we have significantly expanded capabilities of the XIO platform. With comprehensive support for Crestron's portfolio of existing products, such as NVX and control systems. And going forward, all new connected products from Crestron will be XIO enabled at launch. To truly make this the platform that manages all the technology in the room, we knew we needed to expand support to other devices. Today, Samsung commercial displays launched over the last two years have XIO connectivity natively embedded with more brands and device types coming later this year. To better fit into your existing support workflows, we have also added an integration with ServiceNow, automatically creating support tickets when devices fall offline or need an update. New dashboards and the ability to templatize the way you provision and deploy rooms 
makes it even faster for you to deploy rooms at scale. Simply create a template for the way a room is configured, assign that to a device, and when the device is connected for the first time, it'll be configured precisely for that room. To help you ensure rooms are functioning and provide support when troubleshooting, we have also built in the ability to control the room remotely, right within XIO Cloud. Now you can see the user interface for Crestron devices, controlling it as if you were in the room. Now you can take control from anywhere and support your end users without stepping foot into the room. And to enable you to build your own pane of glass, we have worked closely with integrators and IT teams to develop the APIs for monitoring and alerting so you can leverage the power of XIO Cloud in your own applications. So what's next while we continue to invest into making XIO the default choice in the industry for managing rooms? An established benefit of cloud is the infinitely scalable storage and processing power. Every piece of Crestron technology is a sensor providing telemetry to the XIO cloud platform, enabling a clear overview on how your spaces and technology are being used today. We will start with the simple ability to create custom reports and dashboards, so you can immediately leverage the data that your systems have been producing. We will evolve the platform to offer deeper insights and analytics. We intend to leverage the processing power of the cloud and the growing capabilities in artificial intelligence to make things like predictive maintenance and self-healing a reality. XIO Cloud is the platform for you to scale and provide world-class support. It is also the platform for your future innovations. We will give you the tools, extensions, and APIs so you can develop your own applications and workflows and make this vision a reality. I look forward to seeing the products of your ingenuity built on top of XIO Cloud. All right, Ranjan mentioned one of the great new enhancements around XIO Cloud is integration with Samsung displays. So I have Mark Key Rose, VP Product Marketing with Samsung, to talk to us more about Samsung's innovations and their integration with XIO. Sure, thanks, Brad. So Samsung has a deep heritage of relentless, customer-centric innovation. It's at the core of our DNA and has led us to many firsts in flat panel, ultra HD, large screen, and LED technologies. During times of unprecedented change, innovation is about pushing boundaries from impossible to possible. And last year, companies quickly shifted business models, they adapted to rapidly changing market landscapes, and adopted new hybrid working and learning styles. We learned to support our customers from a distance without losing the personal touch. Our teams worked remotely, and collaborated virtually, tuning out distractions while staying focused on the job at hand. And we transformed our homes into offices, customer service centers, classrooms, gyms, and even theaters as we sought to bring balance to the sudden intersection of work and life. Not surprisingly, screens became the critical connection point that powered new ways to work, live, and connect. Samsung displays became the window that kept us connected to what mattered most in business and in life. Now, as the world slowly begins to regain its footing, your customers, employees, and stakeholders will have a new set of expectations. They will demand more personalized experiences that blend the physical and digital worlds. They will seek out new tools that bring greater flexibility and collaboration to their workplace, wherever that might be and they will blend work and life seamlessly to maximize every moment and opportunity. Our cutting edge portfolio, Samsung Business Displays, has always been at the forefront of this transformation. As Runchin mentioned, Samsung Displays now have XIO connectivity natively embedded. We are really excited about this partnership. With the return to physical offices increasing throughout the year, there's a significant opportunity for this Samsung and Crestron solution to make an immediate impact. It enables our customers to reimagine the office and meeting room spaces, as expectations will be high for how meetings will operate. 
I can tell you personally, I will not stand for another meeting where we spend 15 minutes trying to collaborate with somebody who's not in our physical workspace. That is just not something that I'm willing to do moving forward. So I really encourage you to look into this Samsung and Crestron solution. We are looking forward to partnering with all of you to rethink the way our solutions help you work, live, and connect. From the Samsung family, I want you to enjoy the rest of the show and stay safe. Crestron Home is the culmination of many years of work, building a platform to change the way Crestron is used and deployed in homes. The smart home market has changed tremendously in the past decade, and nowhere as drastically as the experience demanded by the customer. The customer experience is front and center in our minds at all times, whether that means leveraging the power and speed of native iOS and Android applications, enabling our dealers to deploy systems rapidly, or simply empowering our customers to customize their homes themselves. We're also committed to making Crestron Home one of the most open smart home platforms in the industry. Similar to XIO Cloud, we're expanding the ecosystem of products that natively integrate with Crestron Home, including Delos, Lutron, Josh.ai, Amazon Alexa, and many more. New products enabled in Crestron Home include new NAX amplifiers with native audio streaming and a beautiful new touchscreen thermostat. With this new platform, we're introducing new features and enhancements with greater velocity. A little over a year and 10 major releases later, and Crestron Home is clearly the platform for growth in the residential market. Which is why a major focus of Crestron Home development involves scale. We enable Crestron Home to scale by improving and refining our Crestron Home extension SDK, enabling the developer community to broaden the reach of Crestron Home and deliver experiences we at Crestron have never even conceived of. We will enable Crestron Home to scale to even larger systems by adding capabilities for multiple processor support and we will help our dealers scale their operations as well. Because as the number of Crestron home installations increase, it is more critical than ever to provide tools to manage those systems remotely. As hybrid work becomes more pervasive, it is those technologies that cross over seamlessly from the office into the home that will enable individual productivity. Our platforms are demonstrating that potential and the value of this crossover today. All right, I have with me today, Jeff Smith, the head of Zoom Rooms. Uh, and we wanted to have a conversation about, you know, learnings from the last year um, and where Zoom is intending to go and support us all in this migration to a hybrid workplace. So Jeff, you've been at Zoom a couple of years, but I think we were talking earlier, the last year probably felt like 10 years uh, as you zoomed up or <laughs> zoomed, as you ramped up and scaled up to absorb all these uh, sudden uh, changes to the workplace. Why don't you share with us some of your experiences? Absolutely, and, and uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it, it has been a challenging year for everyone. And for us at Zoom, uh, what we experienced was an acceleration of trends that we've seen in the industry for the last decade. And it, it definitely felt like a lot of that was compressed uh, into, uh, into a, a very short amount of time. Uh, these were trends that were um, you know, slowly taking place in the workplace uh, with enabling of distributed workforce um, and empowering individuals to, to be productive wherever they were. Uh, and, and seeing all of that take place in such a short amount of time uh, was, uh, you know, it was a challenge. Uh, it was one that we responded to, um, uh, you know, from, from my perspective, we responded to it well. Uh, and it was a, a great responsibility for us uh, to, to be the communication system that so many people relied on to remain afloat uh, in such a in such a challenging time, uh, for us uh, in the in the room space, it was especially challenging. Uh, so, uh, looking at conference rooms being evacuated, uh, you know, around the world, uh, it was 
um, for us to to pivot to to support home workers in our Zoom for Home initiative uh, was was one that we you know took took pride in last summer, and then to to again uh, respond to customers' needs in the support for return to office with uh, you know with voice commands and, and remote control of of devices. Uh, so it's been a journey uh, for us uh, to to rapidly respond to customers' needs. Yeah, I think it is really impressive to see how quickly, you know, everybody from just moms and from, uh, you know, civil groups and all kinds of new scenarios, you know, they were introduced to this, the power of using uh, Zoom as a way to connect and, and collaborate. But as businesses begin to plan and begin the act of bringing everybody back to the office, what do you think are some of the top priorities uh, to take some of these learnings from this period and, and move it into the future? Well, this has been a, a grand experiment uh, where I think we've proven uh, the ability for people to be uh, very effective and productive in an all remote environment. And our challenge now is to also prove that we can be effective in a hybrid environment where we can optimize both scenarios, optimize the collaboration of individuals when they're physically together in the office, as well as being able to include people that are not able to be there physically. And that equity uh, of, of experience, both in the office as well as uh, being remote, is a particular challenge for us in the, in the Zoom room space uh, to, to deliver on the experiences that people expect. And it's, it's not doing the same things that we that we did prior uh, to uh, to all being remote. Uh, when when we go back to the office, uh, it's our feeling that we'll go back with more intention. We won't go to the office to do our work. We'll go to the office to be with our colleagues, to connect with our teams, to collaborate together. And those types of experiences will require different types of spaces to enable that will also require the ability to bring in people that are not able to be there physically. And as we rethink the physical spaces that we collaborate in and the tools that are necessary to do our work, we need to reimagine what those tools are, uh, how they uh, enable us to connect both in real time as well as to content that is persistent, that exists before you know, during and after uh, meetings or meetings are done. Yeah, that's great. So one of the things that has been key to Zoom's success, I think, you know, during this pandemic, everybody embraced it so quickly uh, is partly because of your relentless focus on simplicity and making it really easy to use. How are you extending those same principles into Zoom rooms uh, so that you can really deliver great experiences in the rooms? So our focus on simplicity and ease of use extends to two, uh, two users that I think about. I think about the end user themselves, but I also think about the administrator, about those that are acquiring equipment, that are deploying that equipment, installing it, managing it, uh, and, and also pushing out the application, the Zoom application to, to users. So we think about that entire journey of a customer uh, adopting a new platform for their physical spaces and hardware that uh, that aligns with those visions is uh, and that can also live in all the physical spaces that uh, that customers need to enable and these are small huddle rooms they're regular size conference rooms but they're also collabor open collaboration spaces training rooms uh, executive boardrooms and that's one where, uh, you know, we have heavy reliance on our partners like Crestron to uh, to build uh, solutions that can that can, are fit for purpose in all those different physical spaces. So for Zoom enabling an office requires a whole breadth of solutions, and all of them need to uh, need to enable the the administrator and the. Uh, the procurement and the management, the IT management to 
uh, to deploy them at scale. We're all under a lot of pressure <laughs> to uh, to ramp up quickly uh, because the world doesn't wait for us. And all of these things need to be in place uh, so that our uh, so that all of us can be productive. Yeah, that's right. Well, the world certainly didn't wait for us to get past the pandemic. <laughs> Business had to go on. We all learned how to scale, uh, scale quickly um, and to adapt to those changes. And that is you know, a big part of the reason we're very excited and grateful for your partnership. Uh, we think that the, the tight marriage between Zoom and Crestron Hardware and extending it to all of these spaces uh, making it an equitable place and opportunity for colleagues to to meet and collaborate, whether they're in the office or, or home, you know, and we can do so much good together. So I really appreciate your time, Jeff. Thank you for sharing uh, the your insights and learnings with us. I appreciate it. And thank you for having me. As you can see, we've been busy. We've expanded Flex to enable hybrid work with a new Android compute and a whole new line of Teams phones. Together, we helped land a rover on Mars with Flex and NBX. And the introduction of NAX brings flexibility and scalability to audio over IP solutions in commercial and residential settings. And XIO Cloud continues to expand to bring all your technologies into one ecosystem. Our roadmap is driven and informed by you. And we hope these new products continue to fuel your innovation and creativity. We thank you again for your partnership. We look forward to seeing the experiences you bring to life. But we're not finishing the conversation here. Masters is only beginning, and we invite all of you to continue the discussion in the next session with Crestron's Randy Klein and Ranjan Singh, moderated by Tim Albright from AV Nation. Find the link to that session in the page below. Thank you. All right, thank you guys so much. Rich Chasson uh, is going to kick us off here and uh, tell you what we got, what we have coming up. Rich, great, thanks, Tim. Uh, we are very glad to have joining us with us today, Mr. Brad Hinsey, our Executive Vice President of Global Marketing, Mr. Ron John Singh, our Executive VP of Product and Technology, and of course, Mr. Randy Klein, our President and CEO, with our wonderful moderator, Mr. Tim Albright, CEO of AV Nation. Gentlemen, let's have a nice conversation about what we just saw and more. Absolutely. Thanks so much, sir. Uh, Randy, let's start, we'll start with you and, and get Ron John and, and, and Brad's take on this. Uh, Crestron Masters has been going on for, for basically 20 years, right? And so take me back 20 years ago uh, to that first one and, and what you guys have seen evolved in Masters over the last 20 years. Sure. Um, well, first off, thank you, Tim. And thank all of you for uh, joining us today. I want to first, I just want to thank our entire team for the incredible hard work that they put into this. It takes a lot, a lot of work and a lot of time to put this on. But especially, I want to thank uh, the Grand Master of, the, of them all, Rich, Rich Sasson, because without Rich, I think we all agree there is no masters. So, Richie, we all love you dearly. So your question, uh, take me back. I think the only thing that's older than masters is me. I'll, let's start there. And it's got <laughs> 20 years. Uh, that's an interesting word. What did you use? You used uh, it's changed, it's grown, it's transformed, uh, it's innovated. It's it, there's every word that you can imagine because 20 years and Rich and I can, we can look back and we know it very well. I think uh, there was about 25 people. Um, it lasted a couple of days, and I think there was four or five classes or sessions, as we call it. So fast forward 20 years. Today, we have um, over 2,800 registrants. We actually had to reopen registration because the interest was so high. Uh, demand, uh, Rich was getting hate notes, you know, let me in, let me in, but 2,800 class registrants. There's five, over 5,000 people on this session today. So what a difference. Today we have uh, three master's certifications. There, of course, is the master's programmer. There's the master's technology architect. 
and uh, there is a master's sales associates. And first time new this year, there's actually a dedicated residential course. But I think, um, you know, that that's my take. It's easy for me, uh, but uh, I'd like to maybe ask Ron John and Brad their view because uh, this is one thing. This whole virtual thing, live is a whole different experience. And it's something that's so incredible and so awestruck. Um, it's been two years now for Rich and I and many of us when we last stood on stage. But I, I tell you what, to stand in front of these people, thousands of these people, um, many of them have dedicated their entire lives and their livelihood to this, to education and to Crestron. And I've stood in front of them so many years on this stage. Uh, two years ago, the last time, it was actually the coolest thing I ever saw in my life. There were several people that stood up and they had a few of them stood up and they had three generations of master's programmers with them. Here's the son, the grandson or the son, the father, the son and the grandson or, or the, uh, in one case, it was the mother. OK. And the daughter and the and the grandson of all things, three generations of master's programs. Wow. Um, it's incredible. Some companies, some of our uh, dealers as, and partner companies, they send in excess of 100 people to this course. It's just it's something that's just truly amazing. And I look forward to you two guys, Brad and Ranjan, when you get to experience <laughs> it next year, because we are going to be live next year. Uh, Absolutely. God, and it is going to be terrific for I, I if nothing else, I want to see the look on your face, but I'll, I'll let, I'll turn it over to you guys. What do you, what, what do you say after listening to that? For, for me, I, it's very, uh, I, I've heard so many wonderful <laughs> stories about the, the masters events and, you know, the feeling, the energy, it's not just the sessions, of course, it's also the networking and getting to build those relationships. I do think there's one benefit of, of virtual and, and I hope we can retain that. And that is, the ability to stream our keynote and our primary message so that we can reach a broader audience, right? I think one of the, the things I've heard is the evolution of the master's audience, starting with the, the developer audience only, and then growing technology architects and sales. And, and then today we invited uh, end customers, right? Those that actually right. live with and use our technology too. And, and all of us participate in this great innovation ecosystem. Uh, well, we so will. hopefully- we will. I mean, I think yeah. if anything, this is ta- this last year has taught us uh, the real meaning of the word hybrid, and we will absolutely <laughs> do a hybrid event next year. Yeah, take yeah. advantage of the technology that we're in front of. Well, and, and Ranjit, talk about you know that evolution and what it means from a technology standpoint in getting those developers and those those you know systems architects you know on kind of under the hood and understanding exactly the power that they're being given. Yeah. So uh, first of all, I second that. I, I hope we do get an opportunity to go live. Uh, as Randy mentioned, Brad and I haven't had an, had that opportunity yet. So I'm really looking forward to that opportunity. And so is the broader team at Crestron. Um, to your point, Tim, there has been, uh, as Randy outlined, over 20 years, there's been an expansion of the master's program. And we want to bring more to it, right? Uh, for Crestron's history, we've been delivering experiences. We've enabled our audience, these master's programmers, to deliver these great experiences for our end customers and end users. And I simply see it as an opportunity to continue that expansion. Not only can we enable them to deliver these experiences, we also talk about delivering experiences to the IT and operations professionals, right? Uh, Imagine the opportunity uh, that this pandemic has created, whereby all of a sudden, that experience that was perhaps previously in boardrooms and custom rooms is wanted by all, all the end users in every space. So how do we do that at scale? And that's, we're putting a lot of effort and focus into enabling our, these very programmers and our customers to be able to deliver that experience with APIs, with platforms like XIO. So I just continue to see an evolution of masters, not only delivering the end user experience, but automating the service experience. And that's a great opportunity to continue to build on this 20 plus years of history. Yeah, absolutely. Randy, one of the, the, the taglines, one of the messaging that, that, we're, that you guys are using this week is innovation fuels us. Yeah. What does that mean to you? Uh, innovation fuels us. I think, uh, first off, I think that open video kind of sums it all up. It was just a terrific job uh, for a marketing team, and it really exemplifies everything about us. 
you know, I don't know, many, some people remember this uh, or know this, that, that was the company's slogan uh, from the very beginning was when I joined, always the restaurant, always the innovator, and nothing has changed. So we started, uh, Brad and I started thinking about this, and it kind of started as an internal thing because we wanted to, you know, everybody's home, and we wanted to tell everybody what, you know, it's been a tough year. We want to tell everybody uh, at the company, you know, what we've been doing and what the future looks like. And from there, it kind of grew. And so we decided it was a great way to tell the entire world all about us. What makes us at Crestron, and I've been doing it for 30 years, what makes us get up every morning and, and go out there with the same, with, with such high level of energy and passion and commitment? Simply stated, you know, that's what fuels us. We knew it's not just about products because it's innovation people automatically associate it's about products, but it's, we constantly, constantly re-engineer and innovate ourselves in every part of the business and sales and marketing and customer support, manufacturing, even finance, believe it or not. And of course, our products. Um, I've always said that the words innovation and evolution, they're not interchangeable and everybody uses them all the same. Um, people do it all the time. But every company, they kind of evolve. Some they evolve in a negative way, hopefully most evolve in a positive way, but not every company innovates. And those that do, those are leaders, okay? And it really is important to distinguish that word too, lead, or leaders, because it's not about winning, it's about leading. And those two words also are not interchangeable. Last year, you know, um, we innovated, I think, more than ever as we began to transform and lead into video and collaboration and uh, home and workplace technology. I want to read a quote, okay, that uh, I came in a recent email to, to me, and it's very typical of what we receive uh, today through emails and social media. The quote reads, and I quote, I have continued to follow Crestron through social media, and you have continued to reinvent your company in the face of a fundamental change in how people connect and work when they return back to their office and as they continue to stay at home. That sums it all up. You know, I, I know Today, that we're because of that innovation, we're in a better place than I've ever seen us before. The word that many people use to describe the future is explode. You know, we're on the verge of something very, very big, uh, bigger than we've ever known. I can tell you that I've been in this industry all my professional life. And I will tell you, because we've heard the phrase before, that AV is far from dead. In fact, it has arrived. Everybody wants it. Everybody needs it. And I don't know how you guys feel, but we just can't leave it up to Teams and Zoom to deliver the experience that only we as an industry can. So Ron, I think take that's, some, that's about, what yeah. fuels us. <laughs> yeah. Ron, take, 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 take that, you know, that thread there and, and talk for a second about you know, innovation from the technology side. Yeah. So, uh, well, first of all, I want to second what Randy said. You know, that, that is passion like I've never seen before. I've, I've been worked for various companies and it's unbelievable to see our, our employees and all, all of the various uh, organizations just come up every day looking for a challenge. And that's really what fuels us. So people think about innovation as, as Randy said, products, right? Well, I see innovation and we all see innovation as a function of incremental innovation. There is a challenge, there is an opportunity to solve. Just yesterday evening, we were all in a meeting, right? And we were talking about a hybrid workspace and what was our fear? We, we go back to the same mode of operation whereby uh, the remote users are second class citizens, if you like, and make, and that actually happened in the meeting yesterday. And I walked away thinking, well, this is a challenge we need to get in front of. This is a challenge we need to solve for. I have been aware of it. I've spoken to Elia and Jeff. We are all looking to address this very problem. And as Randy said, Microsoft and Zoom are looking to tackle that problem head on, but so is Crestron. We're looking at our hardware devices. We're looking at camera angles. We're looking at ways to deliver that experience that Crestron has been known to deliver. So that's just one example of a challenge, but I do want to highlight through this pandemic, scale, right? This is an opportunity to deploy products at scale. Our customers want to deploy products at scale, including in places where they don't have people. So what happens when something doesn't work? And it was true. Flex, relatively new product going back 12 months ago, there were issues. 
and you can't go and send people to reboot the systems, et cetera. So we, our engineering team, our products team, our support team, really double down on making sure that we never have to send anybody on site to go and solve those problems. And over the course of five months, we got there through sheer hard work, through creative solutions, to improving our products. We, we don't send anybody on site anymore to solve any of the flex related issues, right? We use XIO Cloud, we use remote technology, we have built a tool set. So this is just an example of innovations that take place. It's not just products, it's in our support cycle, it's in the way we want to serve our customers. Our EVP of manufacturing, you heard Dan Brady talk about, you know there's a global supply chain problem. He and his team are looking at every angle, not just to solve a problem the same way everybody else looks to it, but what can we do? What can we do differently to help serve this industry and serve our customers? You know, so, what he was saying was, was was innovative in several ways. Go ahead, Brad. Yeah, if if I can add to both Randy and, and Ranjan from a slightly different angle, I think that we have been thrown into this global experiment, quote unquote, that disrupted the way we work. You know, we we as a company have changed, but also so have all of the intelligent, bright, creative, innovative people in the audience here today. And there are so many innovations that this group the those that use our technology have created right we talked to tony carafa uh, and what they did at jpl right that was designed well before the pandemic but they modified it quickly so they could continue to to work which was really impressive we've heard about an installation at the singapore airport which was super innovative to solve uh, the ability for people to meet at the airport because they couldn't go into the country uh, to to meet there, you know, and, and having a flexible meeting room space in this wide open room using flex, right? Those are innovations that, that the people that, you know, are out using our technology today create. And that's one of the things that's most exciting for me being at Masters, talking to our partners and, and dealers and integrators and those that are using our technology and uncovering some of these great innovative projects and, and ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, guys, as, as we get, gotta wrap up here, um, Randy, I want to start with you on this. Uh, Infocom uh, was virtual last year. Uh, Cedia was virtual last year. This year, uh, going back to Orlando, uh, going to Indianapolis, Crestron is going back uh, for the first time in a number of years to an in-person Cedia Expo uh, in September. You guys are also going, obviously, to, to Orlando for, for Infocom 2021. Talk for a second about, about what we should expect to see from Crestron uh, this year at both Infocom and CD Expo. Sure. Um, well, for me personally, uh, decades at, uh, at Infocom especially, uh, not to date myself, but what will we see? Um, we're going to see a lot of smiles and we're going to see great energy. And we're, we're just going to see a lot of people that say it's great to be back, normal or not. It's going to be so great to see everyone again uh, live. Uh, and the, at, for Infocom particularly, it'd be greater to give back again through our Swirl event. Uh, this last year has, has we've had time and it has enabled us to make the most incredible roadmap and product delivery strategy that, that I've ever seen in my 30 years for audio, video, control, Crestron Home, and especially I want to thank our great partners at Microsoft and Zoom because through the partnership, through that partnership, you'll see some wonderful things that we'll be able to deliver solutions and, a, and an experience, a customer experience that, that nobody has ever been able to do before. And I think that's what's important. Our, this huge exhibit at Infocom, we have some 10,000 square feet and we built a city, but it's, it's through, that, through that innovation and through those new products and especially through those uh, great, great, tremendous partnerships that enable us to deliver this experience because we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing with, right now without it. So I want to thank our, all of our people. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I want to thank um, all of our customers, of course, and especially thank our partners for uh, you know, being able to show up to Infocom and to Cedia with some pretty terrific stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Ranjan, you, you were able to experience ISC as you were coming into to, to Crestron, ISC 2020. Uh, let me be clear about that. Um, what are you looking forward to and, and kind of, you know, what are you looking to connect with, who you were looking to connect with when it comes to the, the two in-person trade shows this this fall? 
honestly, I can't wait to get to the in-person trade show. My experience at ISC 2020 was absolutely phenomenal. It was mind-blowing for me to go to ISC, have the kind of access to customers, the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with our dealers, our integrators, and our end customers, to be able to showcase technology. Just imagine that Crestron has been innovating and building products for over 12, 15 months now. And by the time we get to Infocom, it'll be 18 months. What better way? You know, you want to touch and feel the products. You want to experience the products firsthand. And we haven't been able to do that. So there's a couple of things I'm really looking forward to. First, getting to meet a whole bunch of people. I've met a whole bunch of people and, and made connections. I'm new to the industry. It was a great experience for me. We got to showcase our products and technology that we had built and we've got to talk about it. So I'm looking forward to the opportunity for everybody to go in touch and feel and experience those products. And lastly, just as important, we, we showcase what we are looking to build, develop over the next two years. We talk about our vision, we bring our vision to life, and we get to hear firsthand. Some of that feedback from ISC has made it into the products that you're seeing Crestron launch today and, and over the last uh, you know, couple of months. All of that is driven by input from our customers. That's firsthand experience. It can't be replaced by the virtual meetings. Uh, that's the conversation. And those are the meetings I'm really, really looking forward to. Apart from, it's just a great show. And Randy tells me that Infocom is that much bigger. So I can't imagine what bigger is. <laughs> yeah. Well, we and we've already started uh, looking at the design of the booth. You know, as, as a marketing professional, there's nothing more exciting than having a whole bunch of products to show off you know, for the first time. And, and we have this whole list. Uh, we have a few things coming too that we won't speak about just yet. Uh, okay. some, some cool, exciting things. Um, but yeah, I think it will be really great to be in person again. We know that everybody comes to these shows to build relationships, to meet other people, but to also get hands-on product, see how it's installed, feel it, turn it around, you know, and, and I think everybody missed that the last 12 months. And so I'm glad we're finally getting into a place where we can go do it in, in person and go do it live. Absolutely. All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you so much. We'll see you uh, in Indianapolis. We'll see you in in, uh, in Orlando. So thank you all so much, uh, Ranjan, uh, Brad, and of course, Mr. Randy Klein. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Sasan, we will kick it back to you, sir. Thank you, Tim. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Randy, Ranjan, and Brad for a great conversation. Really glad to see that we are really moving it forward and the innovation still exists at Crestron on a phenomenal level. Thank you all for being a part of this incredible event. We look forward to seeing you throughout the week. Have a great Masters, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>